Hello, welcome to this episode of YouTube where I'm featuring the ethology class that just occurred on July 25th to the 30th and we had a great time and we had a lot of good stimulating conversations and the wolves provided a lot of great activities so what I want to do is just kind of feature some of the behaviors that you might witness while you're watching the captive pack and we did have a webinar on Wednesday night during the ethology class and we want to congratulate two winners that recorded all of the behaviors accurately. Susan Todd was our webinar winner and Lori Chestnut was our on-site winner of the adoption kits. And so we'll be doing more of those in the future where we give you an opportunity to watch the wolves and then I quiz you on it and try to see how, how you do in uh, identifying behaviors. So the pack has been, again, still active around that sand pile. That's one of my jobs is to try to move that sand pile here pretty quickly. But Aiden did it quite well uh, for the ethology class. One of the things that we always talk about in the study of behavior is the positions of the ear posture and how they mean different things. Ears prick forward is intensity, ears turned to the side, a little bit of intimidation, ears back is typically submission, uh, pinned ears all the way pinned back of the head could be fear or it could be intense aggression depending upon the circumstances. But Aiden did extremely well and Aiden's had a, a good meal. Uh, the ethology class had, the night they came, um, had a deer that was fed and this was filmed on Thursday and not much left. So a large deer is pretty easily consumed by a pack of four and you'll see the ribs cage, the vertebrae has been cleaned up, the hide has been shredded and that's something that they'll come back to and chew on a little bit later. Uh, we did have a little bit of uh, behavioral mm -hmm. anxiety from bolts, uh, from some of the fly issues that's waning as we get into the fall season. We'll have peaks and valleys of flies, but it won't be very long before fall is in the air and those flies are gone. So I think overall the ethology class really did assess that the pack is getting along quite well. They're, they're a very cohesive group. It does appear that, again, Bolt isolates himself because of the fly issue, but when he does come down, he does seem to have a good time. He's, a, again, a, a, a young three-year-old, so he's got a lot of attitude, a lot of energy. Um, as soon as we can get through that fly season, I think we're going to have a much more social activity with bolts. But he gets along quite well with Aiden. He certainly gets along well with Denali. And there are moments uh, that he and Luna have. But for the most part, like I say, bolts is our shyest and probably our lowest ranking right now. And that's probably because of his behavioral attitude towards things that are, are kind of startling. So the rank of the pack is something that the ethology class looked at, but also the individual behaviors, how each wolf kind of um, interacted. Luna, no doubt, um, had a lot of observations and uh, the ethology class would kind of agree that she's the instigator of things. And that's certainly what the ethology class at Vermilion Community College witnessed. And we did an ethology class in the spring semester and those students did observations in from late February into April and and they found most of the antagonistic aggressive behavior was instigated by Luna so that's something that continues to be Luna's personality trait. Aiden's very calm, very alert. Uh, Bolts has also been witnessed as being extremely alert and um, you know that might be again for opportunities because he does seem to get less resources available to him. Now because of that we've been hand feeding him, meaning that we've been uh, separating out Denali who tends to be kind of food possessive and I've been able to feed bolts probably maybe three to five pounds of beef on a regular basis during the week but also I've been adding chicken to his diet. He loves drumsticks. Um, he doesn't like big pieces of meat. When you feed him, you have to hold it. I mean, there's a lot of things that go along with this timid wolf. And one of them here was squat urination, meaning he's not raised like urinating. He does scrape the ground in an excited broadcast of his scent, but he is not an RLU wolf, uh, meaning that he does not raise his leg and urinate um, and spread his scent. He's definitely more timid and doing a squat urination. So these are all behaviors that we like I said, code in the ethogram we witnessed. This is a tail wag of Denali as Luna approaches. And tail wags are part of social greetings. And uh, Denali, like I said, is a very social wolf. He spends a lot of time greeting the other wolves, uh, grooming the other wolves, 
and certainly as one of those individuals that's more tolerant of strangers viewing the exhibit than his brother Aiden. So basically we are in a pattern um, during the summertime here of primarily just feeding on weekends. In other words, there's so much food resources. The ravens are not congregating like they are in the winter, so we're not losing as much to scavengers. We don't have a lot of that calorie need for an additional feeding during the week. So they pretty much get a roadkill on Saturdays by Thursdays. It's pretty much gone down to skeleton two or three days without um, fresh meat. And then they'll go back to, again, getting uh, the opportunity to gorge on Saturday night. Some of the behaviors that come with gorging behavior are things like tug of war, uh, lip curls, the things that they do to guard their food are very, very important, but caching is equally important. Obviously tossing of hides, plucking the hide. That hide, even though there's no meat on it, there are a few tidbits that they do consume and that hide, as they consume it, helps them wrap bone within their um, intestinal or within their stomach and then as it travels through the intestine that bone or those bone shards that they chew on are then wrapped and are safer to go through the intestines that way so having the hide is very very important. Over in, on the east side Grizzers World it is getting thick with vegetation we've got some elderberry that's kind of taken over we've had a lot of wind storms lately and so uh, Grizzer helps himself to some birch branches that have fallen down. Grizzer likes to kind of chew on branches and that's one thing that when we know that Grizzer doesn't like it when the exhibit pack is locked in a pack holding we'll actually hear him snapping branches on the backside when we know that we're not he's not um, happy with our arrangement so like I said Grizzer can get up on the top of the back den he can see the exhibit pack he comes into the front yard and he sees what goes on in the front yard so he's got a wide opportunity to engage in all activities around the wolf yard and as we start this construction for the new building expansion, we're going to be so excited to be able to use it this winter yet and be able to give Grizzly that opportunity to add one more dimension to his life. So with that said, I wanted to share with you, again, a thank you for the CrowdRise campaign. That was amazing um, that we uh, were able to accomplish our goal. And I do want to notify you of another campaign that's going on. This is a match for membership. Uh, if you do become a new member through the month of August, we have an anonymous donor who will donate $15, uh, up to a $1,500 donation to the Wolf Center. And again, we are served by our members. And so we are grateful to those of you who are members. And if you're not members and thinking about being a member, uh, we would welcome you to join during this the Midsummer Membership Match Campaign. We do have a webinar actually next Saturday, and that webinar is a feeding webinar. So if you want to take in some of these behaviors personally, uh, check, in our, check in our website at wolf.org under programs and register for the webinar. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.